Oliver from Rugby League, in my opinion, back with another very special guest. It is Featherston Rovers hooker, Connor Jones. How are you today, Connor? Hey, yeah, good. Thanks, Oliver. Thanks for um, thanks for having me on. Yeah, absolute pleasure. You are currently quarantining in Brisbane, I believe, back home in Australia. You're looking to get back to your hometown of Emerald soon to see your family for Christmas. Tell us a bit about how it's been in quarantine and how much you're looking for, because I believe you said it's been about three years since you've been able to see your family and come back home for Christmas. So, yeah, what's quarantine been like? And uh, you obviously must be looking forward to getting back and seeing the family. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um... Yeah, quarantine has been okay. Obviously, um, 14 days I've been stuck in, in a hotel room. Uh, I've got four days to go um, until, until I'm out, so I'm really looking forward to that. Um, you know, it's probably not the, not the, the most ideal situation, but, um, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, as, as you said, it's been three years since I've been in Emerald and, and since I've spent time with my family, so uh, it's definitely worth the 14 days in the hotel room. Um, to get through that and uh, yeah it's going to be a, a really nice Christmas um, back home in Emerald with uh, with my family. Yeah so the Rovers have actually just gone back to pre-season training I've seen. Have you been given training drills to do whilst you're in quarantine and whilst you're back here in Australia? Yeah so yeah I'm obviously really grateful from my um, club at the moment Feverson Rovers uh, letting me have some time off to go home for Christmas um, yeah, I've been sent a few things just to do in, in my hotel quarantine. Um, you know, I've got some um, some resistance bands and some dumbbells so I can do a bit of stuff there. Um, and then, yeah, once I get back to Emerald, um, I'll be sent um, some weights programs and some running programs just so I can stay on top of that. And by the time I get back to England in January, ready for the season, um, you know, hopefully I'm in good stead and um, can, you know, hopefully just um, slot right back in uh, with the boys. Yeah, awesome. Well, yesterday I had a chat to Jesse Senolafeu, who's recently signed with Featherston. I don't think you would have met him at the training ground yet or anything, as he's just made the move uh, while you've been over here. However, when I was chatting to him, he spoke about how he's recently just bought a pub not too far uh, from the club. So what I want to know is, uh, will you be expecting freebies down his local next year? Freebies, yeah. Um... I haven't met him yet, but um, yeah, after I get to know him, um, yeah, I'll definitely be into him. Um, that, that could be the new spot for the boys um, after a game and that kind of thing. Um, yeah, I'll have, to, I'll have to tell him that Oliver, Oliver sent me and for some free <laughs> beers. <laughs> hey, I'm, I, I'm not the one sending you. You're the one that's the team, mate. you got to work <laughs> out with him. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I want to get into your career now. Grew up in Emerald, I believe, sort of a small town up towards Rockhampton Way. Is that a an accurate description? Yeah, Rocky's probably the closest small city. Um, yep. it's, it's still a three-hour drive from Rocky, but yeah, Emerald's in um, right in the heart of Central Highlands in Central Queensland. So um, yeah, it's qu quite a small town. Uh, but yeah, I really really enjoyed growing up in Emerald. Um, played all my junior footy there for the Emerald Tigers, and um, in my last year in Emerald um, in 2013, I, I got to play for the senior Tigers team as well. So. Um, absolutely loved the Emerald Tigers and yeah, loved growing up in Emerald. Tell us a bit about playing junior rugby league in Emerald because you know, a, a bit of a smaller town. What was the scene sort of like? I, I take it the pathways growing up in Emerald probably would have been harder to sort of break out and maybe make it into a, an NRL system than it would be in other areas. So what was that like? Um, yeah, yeah, you're definitely right. Um, obviously, yeah, in Emerald, um, so there's two teams in Emerald, Emerald Tigers and Emerald Brothers, um, and all the other teams uh, are from the towns around Central Highlands. So every away game was um, a half an hour drive or an hour's drive. Um, I think two hours was the, the, the furthest we went when Morumbai was in the competition, there in the Mackay competition now. So, um, you know, it was pretty cool going around to those towns playing. Um, obviously, you know, because of the numbers, it was um, it went up in twos, the age group. So... Um, when I started in, in, I started under nine, so under nines, 11s, 13s, 15s, 17s. Um, that's what, that's how it went when I was, uh, when I was growing up. So it was good for a small fellow like me. I kind of, um, had to get used to tackling the big boys, uh, or the boys a, a year older than me. And, um, you know, yeah, I really enjoyed my junior rugby league at the Tigers and, um, yeah, it was a, it was a good little competition. 
I think um, I think numbers wise they're struggling at the moment um, in the last couple of years, which is quite sad to see. But um, you know, it's country rugby league. It's 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 um, sometimes it's it's hard to to get those numbers and that kind of thing. But when I was growing up, I thought it was it was a really good competition. Yeah, well, you would end up in an NRL system, uh, I guess, through playing at Emerald, but it wasn't necessarily one in Queensland. You actually made the move down to Sydney to play with the Bulldogs in the under-20s, I believe, circa sort of 2015, 2016. Tell us about how that move came about to the Bulldogs and how hard it must have been at a young age to make the move from Queensland to New South Wales. Um, yeah, well... Well, first of all, um, before I got to the Bulldogs, um, like I said before, I played in, for the Senior Tigers in 2013, my last year of high school. And um, from there, we had a, a little alliance with East Tigers in, in Brisbane. Yep. So I spent a year in Brisbane with the East Tigers um, playing in their Colts team, um, which was a really good year for me. That was a really good stepping stone going to the Bulldogs. Um, so I've already had a year under my belt in Brisbane, living away from home and then from there, I went to the Bulldogs, um, you know, down in Sydney for two years. And, um, you know, that was that was a really good experience for me. I, I love living in Sydney. Um, you know, the, the Bulldogs are a really good club, um, you know, for their junior boys. That, you know, they put me in, in a house house share with um, with uh, some other boys from, from Queensland, New, uh, New Zealand and country New South Wales. So that was really good. I really enjoyed that. We had a really good bunch of boys and we we're all um, none of us had any family in Sydney, so we we're always um, always doing stuff with each other on the weekends and that kind of thing. So, yeah, I really enjoyed it. It was a really good two years. Yeah, I guess it's good to sort of have that core group, that camaraderie of everyone who's sort of a quote unquote outsider, you could say. Um, I yeah. take it that would have helped, but you would end up in 2017 uh, heading back to Queensland, to the Northern Pride, uh, where you play in the Intra Super Cup. I take it that move uh, probably out of being closer to home, an opportunity closer to home as well? Uh, it was more just an opportunity, really. Um, the, the two years I was at the Bulldogs, you know, it was an amazing two years in Sydney, but I didn't really play um, many games. Um, first year, I only played one game of 20s, um, just, just due to form, not getting picked. Uh, the second year, I think I played seven or eight games so again um in and out of the team didn't, couldn't really cement a spot which was frustrating because i felt like um i felt like i definitely uh deserved to be in there but um just the way it was it, it was kind of in and out of the team so um yeah obviously at the end of the, that 20s um you know there, there wasn't much for me obviously not playing many 20s games it's kind of hard to, to to get a deal somewhere so i was, I was very grateful that the pride offered me a, a deal and um, yeah, I went up to Cairns and um, yeah, had two and a half years up in Cairns with the Northern Pride, which I really enjoyed. Cairns is a beautiful place to live in, and the Northern Pride had you know so much. They were they um, haven't been in the competition for too long. I think two thousand and eight was their first year, I believe. But a lot of history in that short short time they've been in the Queensland Cup. Yeah, well, you bring up how you spent two and a half years at the Pride because in the middle of the 2019 season is when you'd actually make the move over to the UK to Featherston. How does a move like that come about during the season? And I ask this to every Australian or New Zealander that I've had on here that's since gone over to the UK, not speaking as an athlete, but for you, how difficult was that moving to the other side of the world, especially halfway through the season? Yeah, it was a, it was a, it was a massive decision. Um, I've got a British passport, so I'd always been talking to clubs um, for the last probably two or three years before I eventually did move. And um, yeah, it kind of came out of nowhere, really. Um, you know, I had talked to Featherston uh, at the start of the year, and nothing really came out of it. And um, yeah, it was about halfway through the year. It was kind of my first year. I'd cemented my spot in the Pride team. I was. Um, starting every game and we weren't going that great as a team but personally I, I was having one of my better years um, so that was well, that was going okay and uh, yeah Feverson kind of reached out in the, in the middle of the year and um, you know at first I kind of wasn't really sure but I just thought to myself you know what, why not um, the pride were really good they, they gave me their blessing they, they told me yeah look go for it if you don't like it you're more than welcome to come back so we had, there was about three months left of the season over in Featherston. I just thought, you know, why not? Um, I get to go over to England, um, see some of the, the other side of the world. I get to experience rugby league in a, um, 
you know, in a different country. And, um, you know, the Feverson were going real, quite well at the time, um, you know, in, in contention for playoffs and in contention, um, you know, to, to get promoted to Super League. So I thought it was a really good opportunity. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm really glad that, that I decided to, uh, to move to make the move over. Yeah, well, you are back at the Rovers again now, but in 2020, there was a season where you'd actually make the move to a Super League club, Southard. I don't believe you played a whole lot for them, but just tell us a little bit about that season in 2020 in Super League and that move to Southard, how that came about. Yeah, so it was, it was quite weird. I think I only played two or three games for Featherston uh, when I signed with Salford uh, for the 2020 season. Um, you know, I went over to Featherston, you know, wanting to do well in the finals, but, uh, you know, I would always, I always had a goal of, of trying to play Super League and play at the highest level. So, um, you know, I was really proud that, um, you know, I signed with Salford and um, that season itself, 2020, it was the strangest rugby league season I've ever been involved in, yeah. uh, obviously because of COVID. Um, we probably played about, I think we played five or six games before um, COVID kicked in. So, I played four of them um, to start the year off. And then obviously COVID came in. I think we were off um, with games for about six or seven months, something like that. We were off training for three or four. Um, so, you know, that was a really strange time. Um, it was really quite difficult living over in Manchester on my own and being in lockdowns and that kind of thing. But, um, yeah, we eventually got the season back up and running and, and then, um, yeah, finished the year off with Salford. So, uh, you know, it was great. You know, being full time was was great. Um, I learnt lots. Um, there's some some really experienced players. Um, some players that have played for England. Um, you know, and 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 the like. So, um, you know, it was a it was a really good learning year for me. Yeah. Well, obviously, the move back to Featherston in 2021. You speak about wanting to, I guess, play Super League. That being the goal. Um, and the playoffs that you went through with Featherston, well, you guys were back there at the brink of promotion in 2021. As a matter of fact, I think Toulouse went through the season undefeated and the only team you guys had lost to, I think it was Toulouse, wasn't it? So yeah. it was, you couldn't have come any closer. Heading into 2022, uh, I think I just saw on Facebook somewhere the other day that Featherston are the bookies' favourites to go up in 2022 after coming so close on a couple of occasions. I just wanted to ask, I guess we've been the favourites on paper. You know, you guys have brought in some ex-NRO, ex-Super League talent now and the likes of Jesse Senolafe and it was literally less than 24 hours ago announced that the club had also signed Joey Leilua from the Tigers. How do you personally handle that pressure, I guess you could say, of being the favourites of being the team expected to go up at the end of next year? Is it something that you personally feel like it might be a bit of a challenge to deal with or do you just still go about your your daily process? Um, yeah, it's a good question. Um, I haven't really seen the um, what, who's favourites or whatever um, for promotion. Uh, it's not really something that we speak about. Um, in our circle, in our club, we're, we're just obviously, well, I'm not there at the moment, but the boys are just worried about ripping in in pre-season and, and kind of just, um, you know, taking each game as it comes. Obviously, there's no secret, um, you know, we've got a great squad, uh, obviously off the back of last year, um, or, um, season 2021, you know, we did have a great season. Um, I was, you know, unfortunate to, to lose to Toulouse in that million pound game. Um, you know, it was, it, was, it was really quite disappointing the way we played and, um, the way we finished the season off. Um, full credit to Toulouse, they played amazing and they deserve their spot in Super League. So, you know, there, there's a lot of motivation for us going into next season, having missed out in 2021, um, having missed out in 2019 as well. There's a, a lot of the squad that played in the million pound game that year that um, that missed out. So uh, there's a lot of hurt in the in the boys at the moment. There's, a, there's plenty of motivation to, to go up to Super League and that's the club's sole ambition. That's what everybody's working towards. Um, everybody knows that comes to Feverson knows that we want to get promoted. So, um, you know, that's the sole focus going into um, season 2022. And um, yeah, it's a, it's a long way to go before, um, you know, before that, that happens or, or anything like that. It's a long season. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's definitely the end goal. Does 
the recent accolade, I guess you could say, of the Penrith Panthers losing the 2020 grand final in the NRL and then coming back in 2021 to win it, does that serve maybe in a way as a bit of inspiration for you guys, I guess you could say, getting, as I said, to the very furthest you can get without actually getting promoted, getting there. And I guess it's an example that you can get back to that point and go further the season after. Is that something I guess you guys could take as a bit of inspiration? Is that something I guess you've looked closely at relatively or sort of been keeping um, keeping track of that NRL season last year? Um, yeah, I guess you could say that. Obviously, you know, it's it's um, yeah, it's good experience for us to experience what it's like to play in a million pound game. Um, well, we've we've played in two now, so you know, at the, at the end of the day, um, in a grand final, it's eighty minutes. Anything can happen. There's there's two teams out on the park. Um, anybody can win that game. Um, you know, it is good that, like I said, we've got that experience. But um, you know, I, yeah. So a lot of people say you've you got to lose one to win one, but I think you just got to get there, and you and once you're there, just make the most of it. And um, you know, we've got to get there first. Like I said, it's there's a long season ahead. Uh, we're not looking for too far ahead. That's obviously the end goal, what we're working towards. But um, yeah, I think that we can definitely take a lot from our experiences from this season, and and yeah, take him into to next season. Yeah, uh, one final question from me today, Connor, and it's more about sort of the future for you. I guess um, one day are you maybe looking to return to Australia or return to Queensland uh, to finish up your rugby league career there one day or is England home now? You've been there uh, going on three years now. Is wh- Where are you sort of looking at in terms of the future of your rugby league career? Are you happy to sort of stay in England um, or one day are you possibly, yeah, looking to come back to Australia uh, to finish off your career here um yeah it's a good question and um one that i probably can't answer right now i obviously will obviously end up in australia when that time comes i'm not too sure if i'm still playing rugby league i'm not too sure at this moment in time you know, I'm, I'm happy in england playing um i'm happy at feverson it's a great club and um you know i've got some lifelong friends that are involved in the club already and um you know i do really enjoy it over there um, but, you know, I'm contracted for the 2022 season. So, you know, I'm just going to rip in and, and have the best year I can and, um, and just see what happens after that. Um, yeah, so I'm not too sure what what the future holds for me in terms of where I'll be playing rugby league. But, yeah, at the moment, I'm really happy at Featherstone and um, just working towards, like I said before, getting promoted with Featherstone. That, that's the end goal and that, that's, that's all I want to achieve next season. Yeah, well, that's great to hear. Uh, we're finishing up now, but I just wanted to say to everyone out there, if you want to see what Connor's made of, I guess you could say, and sort of want to follow along with him in 2022 and his journey with Featherston, a great way to start is to check out his highlights package from the 2021 season, which he's uploaded to his YouTube channel, Connor Jones, which is just below here. You've got the highlights from your time at the Bulldogs, Northern Pride, uh, and the 2019 season as well. So if you want to see how good of a footballer Connor is, head over and make sure you check out his highlights. And other than that, Connor, hopefully, um, we can talk again down the line. Hopefully, it's as a Super League player uh, for Featherston in 2023 and beyond. And thank you for jumping on today. Yeah, thanks for having me. I appreciate it.